Hi, and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to explore a 3D finishing command called 3D Morphing. 3D Morphing Toolpath can be a handy way of machining uh, complex 3D shapes. Now, in this sample, nothing is complex about what we're doing. This is just going to be a way to help you understand how to control uh, this command a little bit better. So let's get started. 3D Morphing is found in the 3D Finishing section. Before we begin, let's go ahead and pick 3D Morphing from our kind of machining. Let's go pick a tool. In this case, I'm just going to use a 1 inch, uh, one eighth inch ball nose. To begin with, 3D Morphing requires two things. It needs either two open profiles, an open profile to a point, or a closed profile to a closed profile, or a closed profile to a point. And I'm going to give you samples of everything here. So. We're going to start with open profiles. I'm going to machine from this edge, and I'm using rotative selection to grab it, to this edge. Perfect. The big thing you want is these arrows need to flow in the same direction. Okay. We'll talk about what synchronization curves are when we go over to this sample over here. But what this is going to do is this is going to morph your toolpath or bend it between these two profiles so that we're following the natural flow of geometry. If I go look in my settings here, just for fun, I'm at a half thou tolerance, and I'm just at a 20,000 step over for now, which is fine. We'll let that crunch out really quick. And now let's go look at our tool path. And if we look straight on at it, you can see that over here, it's following this arc shape. And as we progress throughout the cut, it's bending to end up winding up following this curve on this side. Okay? And that's the basics of 3D morphing right there. Now, you can use synchronization profiles in between your two sets of profiles to bend the toolpath to your will. Okay, and I'm gonna show that over here. But before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and create a point really quick, and I'm just gonna do this in CAD mode. Uh, we'll go to construction, points, and I'll do a projected point. There's fast ways to do what I'm doing. I'm just picking this, Oh, let's go up to, is that a plane? We want up to a face, up to there. Okay, and we want our direction to be relative to that, so it's perpendicular, perfect. All right, let's go make another 3D morphing. So I'm gonna come back to my finishing. I'm gonna come here, choose morphing. We'll go here, and my starting curve in this case is gonna be this edge here. And now my second curve is gonna be that point, right? So we can zoom up on it, make it easier to select if you like. I'm gonna turn off my tool so it's a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. There we go. And I'm gonna change nothing, I'm just gonna accept okay. And let's take a look at this tool path from the top down. Now, when you're dealing with something like this, what you're gonna notice is this is a perfect spiraling tool path. It's maintaining scallop height, which is fantastic. And it's doing exactly that. It's morphing from this outer profile all the way to the point. And while looking at this top down, that looks great. If we rotate this, you can see that your tool is plunging down, coming up, plunging down. And yeah, if you make your uh, step over small enough, it's probably not gonna hurt the tool much, but you know, the surface finish may not be the best. You can get some tool flex and what have you. So now this is where 3D morphing gets its name. So let's turn that off for a sec. And what I want to do is I want to bend the tool path. I'll turn this back on for a sec. So that by the time we get to the bottom of this fillet, it's following this profile here. Okay, so let's give that a go. To do this, the simplest is to create a profile. So I'm going to go to my 3D sketch here, and I'm going to go to my edges copy. And let's just go grab uh, profiles or loops, see how that works. Let's use that one. We'll validate out of here. We're going to come back, modify this 3D morphing, and we're going to go to the geometry button and just go to our synchronization profiles and select that profile. And here again, I use, uh, use rotative selection because you could just select a segment. I want the whole profile, so I used rotative selection, and that's all I'm going to do. And now watch the magic here. Now if we look at this from the top down, now notice we're starting off, again, circular on the outside, but as we get closer to the boss in the middle, it's now bending that toolpath 
so that it's following the natural flow of the geometry. Okay, And if you look at this from the side, you can see that's significantly better there as well. But now as we look to the top and we get to this top little dimple or whatever it is on the top, you're going to again wind up with some strange looking cutter marks. Again, it'll be gouge free, but to the naked eye it'll look strange. So maybe we want to morph it again. So let's go add another profile. Again, you could just select the edge. It's simple here, but it's easier to talk with profiles. So I'm just going to select that one there. Green check. Validate. We'll come back to our operation. Go back to our geometry. Go to here. Select that new synchronization profile. Click OK. And now you'll notice that as we get to that finish now, we're back to circular once we get to this circular feature. And that's why it's called 3D Morphing, and it's a great toolpath strategy for creating very good, clean toolpath that also bends to the flow of the geometry. If you wanted to, you could add more synchronization profiles. For example, I could grab the top of the radius here to really force it to be following that flow. You can add as many synchronizations as you want, or as few as you want, and then you can, of course, use the convert to 5-axis if you want to run this in 5-axis continuous. Hope you enjoy using 3D Morphing.